Okay, hey, is this thing blurry? I think it is. I don't really care. Okay, I want you to see this. I'm carrying this around with me. It's gonna go away. All right. I, I'm on. Uh, I spent. I spent the weekend binge watching. Binge. We use that word like it's cool or something. Binge used to be a bad connotation of something, but. Well, let's just say I watched a lot of videos on keto, the ketogenic diet. It wasn't anything like I supposed. It, it well, somewhat. I mean, I knew you eat lots of meat, but I didn't know you almost dumped all carbs. Now, I don't eat a lot of sugars. I don't never have. I've uh, never been a fan of sugars. It was just the way I was raised, I guess. And carbs, though. I always thought I was eating good carbs, oats and things like that. Really surprised me after learning that actually oats, as good as all the little ads are, they're not that good for you. Very high in uh, getting getting your blood sugar to spike. Uh, you can take tests, I guess, if you have a glucometer. From what I understand, if you uh, you know check your blood glucose, glucose, that stuff, and then. Uh, a few minutes, you know, wait, wait, five, ten minutes after you eat the uh, a, a bowl of oats, you know, oatmeal. Now, without sugar and uh, even without milk, just a little butter on it, you know. Uh, some people like, you know, not quite runny oats, but slather them up with a little butter so that there's no, uh, there's no sugar or milk. Because milk will spike you. Might, milk's got sugar in it. Natural sh milk sugar. Milk has sugar. Milk is sugary. The sugar is sugary. You know that. I know you know that. So anyway, <laughs> uh, after you eat the oatmeal, uh, you get a spike. Well, I had been, over the past, let's say, four or five months, uh, eating a, a food product called Huel. You've probably heard of Soylent, and if you haven't, you may have heard of Soylent Green, but anyway, Soylent was, is a food replacement that uh, is a liquid. It's not like the cans you get in the store, you know. Food replacement and, and some of the health food stores. This is a very scientifically made uh, Soylent. And then uh, the one from Canada is Huel. And they didn't use soy. So that was good. That was good. I thought they used oats and peas. And then all the other nutrition that you need throughout the day. Uh, fibers and vitamins and stuff that greens give you so that you could almost live in space. Well, of course, it, you need air, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And then something to keep, you know, pressure on your body so it doesn't, like, yeah, shut up, Ed. Anyway, <clears throat> HUEL, human fuel is what HUEL stands for. And I was finding that uh, I was trying to diet. I, I was eating a lot less, okay? However, I, I, after I would drink these drinks with the Huel in it, I would notice that I would go into my office and have that coma, that carb coma. And I was really noticing it last week because I was really trying to finalize. Yeah, you know, like the way you get the fingers up here to, you know, I don't talk with my hands a lot, but when I do, the little things flutter. Okay, so I was trying to finalize the way I was eating less. I was really, I was down to two scoops of this stuff. Okay, and I'd flavor it uh, with, let's see, in the morning, well, a couple of strawberries uh, uh, last week because I had some. Or uh, I would I would put in like vanilla flavoring uh, for breakfast and or, or maybe uh, anise, which is a kind of a licorice flavor. Also, <clears throat> I had, uh, let's see, what else did I have? Anise, I just said vanilla. Anyway, those are the main two. And so after that, I would have my morning coma and crash over in my office, and I'd come out of that, and then I'd go, okay, it's almost noon, it's about 11 or noon, and I'd try to wait till noon, because I'd be getting hungry again, even though I'm drinking this stuff. And then uh, noon or one o'clock, I would uh, drink another one, and I would mix it with um, a bouillon, bouillon, as we say in America, bouillon, Bouillon, and uh, of course, there's some salt in it, but that's okay. I'm not 
um, eating a lot of other foods, so this, it's one way to get my salt. I would eat that with a bouillon <clears throat> and uh, some garlic and black pepper, and then go back over to my office, and it would taste like soup, like a sludge soup. I call it my sludgy. Instead of a, what do they call them, smoothie? I call it a sludgy. Okay, that's fine. It tasted good. So I was doing this now for two or three weeks, and every every day that I, I noticed that after I took them, the simple carbs of the oats and the peas in Huel, which is a complete food, you can look it up on the internet, H-U-E-L, like fuel, only Huel, okay, I would have my carb load, my carb crash. Well, in the meantime, over the past year, you may have that had this too in your junk mail, you get uh, emails advertising keto. You've heard of keto, K-E-T-O, keto. It's not a radio station, but well, it sounds like a good idea. Maybe I could start it because I am in radio for a living. This is oops, this is the Gospel Airship right here. If you can't, this thing's in the way. There we go. Okay, so anyway, I learned a lot about keto over the weekend because uh, I like to eat meat for one thing. I'm you know not impartial to vegetables. Uh, but I do know that I love me some meat, and I like fat. Not fat, fat, like you sit around and eat some fat, but I like butter. Margarine is poison. You should know that by now. If not, look it up. Margarine, uh, out of my diet. I haven't used that in, oh, sh over a decade. I love me some butter. I cook with it. Uh, I don't use vegetable oil. I learned about 10 years ago that that's nasty. Uh, any of those canola oil that's that's it's out it's actually from rape seed it's not from corn they make it sound like corn cornola it's not it's canola and it it's just a trick rape seed is bad for you that's rape seed oil vegetable oils all those are bad for you the uh peanut oil even the people talking about that that's not really good for you okay coconut oil is but you don't want to really cook high temps with it um, same with, uh, now, what is good for you? Some of the things like, uh, uh, well, let's see, the, the little things like that. And they oh, 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 olive oil, olives, yeah, olives oil. Olive oil is good for you. And you don't want to cook high temp with that either. Um, lard, yes, lard. So all these things we learned about uh, animal fat being bad for you, uh, I've learned is a lie, okay? Uh, the keto... Uh, the, there's a doctor. His name is Dr. Kenneth Berry, B-E-R-R-Y, not B-A, but B-E-R-R-Y. And his wife is a nurse, registered nurse, Nisha. Now, he's a real medical doctor, Dr. Kenneth Berry. So I watched the, over the weekend, I watched probably 20 of his videos. Now, this video is my first one on my weight loss journey. I'm going to go forward with this with the keto diet and... I, I've been hovering at 299. It's really disgusting me. When I walk my dog, I'm like, okay, this is the only exercise I get because I'm so heavy and I want to expend myself. My joints are starting to hurt and um, things like that. Well, getting off of carbs completely, even those oats and peas in, in my Huel, is going to benefit me, okay? Uh, people that are on keto, if you look at some of the videos of Dr. Barry, look him up on YouTube, look him up on Facebook, uh, look at the comments of the other people that are doing keto. Uh, I made a new friend last night. Uh, her, uh, she's, uh, her story is that she's lost already a hundred and something pounds since January of this year. Okay, this is 2018. Today is Monday, um, October, was it 28th, I believe, 28th or 29th, okay, and this lady and her family, her husband and kids, they live in, I believe, Nebraska or somewhere in the Midwest, the Western Midwest. <clears throat> she's lost that weight by going keto, okay? She's proud of it, and I don't blame her. So she's already written a book. Since, since January, she's lost all that weight. She's written a book. She's got a following on the Internet. I watched a video with her last night. Uh, she is very excited about what she's doing. It's, it's mostly eating meat. And, and, and here's the thing that I've noticed now uh, watching these videos over the weekend. Butter is your friend. Okay, 
the way this journey kind of started off me really looking into it last week, I'll go there. Many years ago, uh, I'm looking up there like I'm going to find out how many years. Yes, oh, there, yeah, 12.72985329 years ago. <clears throat> Just kidding. Tuesday. <laughs> oh, that's my dog, Tuesday dog. Yes, sir. Oh, did my hair make me look silly? No, Ed, you look silly without your hair. Why, well, you... Okay, so <clears throat> looking back into something that I remember from, um, I, I like to watch, uh, like many of you, geographical things and so, sociology, things about different societies. Uh, there's a group of people that live in the Himalayas, the Himalayas, the Himalayas. They have a, a tea and they put a, a, a little thing of rock salt, like the Himalayan salt, okay? And they put that in there. And then they take a, a, a slab of butter, or tab of butter, slop of butter, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and they mix that together and they drink their tea. And they can go all day just about without eating. And you know what? They're really healthy people. And so... I remembered that over the years, and ever occasionally, not every once in a while, but occasionally, I guess that is every once in a while. Is every once in a while and occasionally the same thing? Mm, I don't know. I'll have to look that one up. So occasionally, I would take my uh, butter, use real butter, okay, and put it in my coffee and mix it in. And, and I have now I have what they call a bullet which is a high-speed blender, and I, I would froth it up. And amazingly, I find out that that is one of the steps of keto. When you get up in the morning, you take your caffeine and your butter, and uh, I just started doing this this morning of adding salt to it. Now, I've been putting the, the butter into the coffee and, and frothing it up. It's, it's delicious. I like it because some people like cream in their coffee. Cream's fattening. Uh, pure cream is okay. It's fattening, but it doesn't have the sugar in it. So don't put the uh, skim milk or artificial sweeten or artificial cream. Have you ever looked at the ingredients? Like I like I pretend pretend like that's in my hand and I'm reading it. Okay, if you look at the ingredients on on uh, artificial sweeteners or not sweeteners. I'm sorry. I'm, what I'm talking about is that look, powder, that white powder that you put in your coffee. You know what that's made of? Huh? Do you? Take a look. Go. Oh, wait, right here. Okay, go. Get it. Open it. Huh? Open it. Closet or whatever you call that thing. And cabinet. Now, okay, now, vegetable oil. Okay? They, they do something to, to, to it, like dry this vegetable oil into a powder and add some sugary sweetener type stuff to make it taste. You know, the like cream has a sweet. I mean, really? You're putting vegetable oil in your coffee? Okay, it's not good for you anyway. Vegetable oil is not good for you. And uh, this uh, artificial creamer is not good for you. So don't be don't be eating that. That's nasty. That, that, get that away from your mouth. You put that in your mouth? You kiss your mother with that? Oh, man, get that stuff out of your mouth. Okay, so I started that. And, and I really noticed this last week before I started watching Dr. Kenneth Berry's videos. I had taken the butter in my coffee. And I drank it. Now, this is just Thursday and Friday in the mornings that I'd done this. And I had frothed it, and, and I drank it. And all of a sudden, it's like, not all of a sudden. I mean, it's not like, no. It didn't make time go. That isn't what I'm trying to portray. What I'm saying is that uh, time passed, and I had forgotten to eat. Yeah. No breakfast. Okay. So, but it's generally I would eat like gosh, eight thirty, nine o'clock because I I like to, I like to start work, uh, at nine at least to be at my desk and then, so between eight and nine thirty, uh, or eight and eight thirty, uh, I'm getting up and and getting moving around, getting my stuff done. So between eight thirty and nine, I've got uh my little I was telling you I was making Huel, okay I would take my 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 little container for my bullet and flavor up my Huel and get that so that at nine o'clock I'd be sitting at my desk having that. Uh, I would have my coffee before that, but in the last couple of days before the week ended, I would froth up my butter into my coffee 
and go sit at my desk. And for some reason, I wouldn't go, oh, I need to go make my breakfast. So it would be 10 o'clock sometimes before I realized that, hey, I haven't eaten yet. And this is when I noticed that when I went ahead and took that break and came back to my little kitchenette here at work and made my Huel, once I made my Huel and drank it, I would get sleepy because I was doing okay. I check all my emails. I got like four emails I have to check every morning. And so I, I realized something about that. It's like, wow, why am I getting so sleepy after this? So now I know. Okay, so the butter and the coffee would help keep me from feeling hungry. I, I learned over the weekend to add a little salt to the coffee. And then I thought, hey, that's what the Hemonglians do. And I'm thinking, for crying out loud, they've known this for hundreds, probably thousands of years, and we're just catching on to it. Okay, so my weight journey, I wanted you to see that. Okay, that thing fell. Look at this. A little fat boy. Huh? Okay, it's going to go away. All right, look at that. It goes down into a pooch down here. Now, that's gross to me. It's like, you know, I used to see people like that when I was young and go, Ew, I'll never be like that. Here I am. Okay. It's going to go away. Okay. I've watched enough of those videos. And uh, what's neat is, uh, well, you know, when you watch comments on things, when you see the comments of people that I lost uh, 48 pounds in like uh, three months. Okay. For crying out loud. Well, don't cry out loud if you don't want to, but in a bucket of water. Yeah, if you cry out loud in a bucket of water, you lose 48 pounds. No, I mean, no, if you go on the keto diet, you lose 48 pounds in three months. Now, this uh, results are not guaranteed. Now, here's the cool thing about keto, okay? Here's what I love. I love this. It's not network marketing. There's no product, keto product to buy. There's some products to buy to help you keto, that's not the same, okay? This is stuff you can get at any grocery store, any health food store, okay? Uh, it's not like, oh, keto, this this little, this is keto. If you buy stuff that says it's for keto, you're blowing your money. Yeah, you are, okay? That's the one thing I learned over the weekend, okay, by watching all those videos. Dr. Barry is very good at explaining that, and then my new friend, and I can't remember her name, I know his first, her first name is Stacy, uh, <clears throat> Stacy also mentioned that she, before she started watching Dr. Barry, she bought everything. That, if it said keto, she had it. And she said it's still in her closet or on shelves or in bags somewhere. And she's realizing, okay, so it's butter and meat. And then fresh vegetables, green vegetables, leafy vegetables, broccoli tile style stuff, spinach, kale. And if you don't like that stuff, Put a bunch of butter on it. The butter's good for you. Okay, the stuff about uh, if you're worried about the butter clogging your hearts, your bacon. Bacon is great for you. Bacon, the fat, the fat from beef, fatty beef, fatty hamburger, all that stuff that you've been told is bad is what's making these people lose weight. Okay, and they're losing weight, and then they go in for their blood checkups, and you know what? They're doing fine. And the thing about high cholesterol, your LDL and everything, being high is a lie. Okay, there's uh, scientific studies uh, where people have retracted those statements. It's like, uh, how, how the, there, there's a video to watch from a doctor that talked about how they skewed the numbers so they could sell statin drugs, okay? Go figure, statin drugs for sale. And so the doctor goes, oh, your LDL is high. And this is, <clears throat> there's really no proof that high LDL is bad for you. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's almost the opposite, and but it's a way for if if I can get an indicator on my blood work that uh, a, a pharmaceutical can say, hey, let's use this indicator, and then if it, this indicator gets up to this number, you get you get them on our drugs, and then they know most people's LDL will get high or their their HDL or one of the two, and then they'll go, oh, that'll get them on statins, and so. The doctor goes, okay, I'm going to put you on these statins. You go home and take them, and they don't really do anything for you. And sometimes the people on statins actually die before the people that aren't on statins, like Gil figure, you know. And uh, that that anyway, there's a lot of videos to watch about that. And what I like about Dr. Barry is he is a medical doctor. 
He doesn't have an agenda. He's not selling any product, okay? He does ask for offerings like they do at church, and he, he just mentions it at the end uh, of his uh, videos. And I'm not asking for money. Uh, I, Of course, you know, people like money. It would be nice. Uh, but anyway, my point is he has no agenda. And the people that he's helping... One of the things is uh, he talks about a couple of other doctors that have gotten away from uh, the medical practices of not helping you with your nutritional needs. To, In other words, most doctors don't really care about helping. Well, maybe they care, but they can't because they're, they're kind of stuck between a hawk and a large spot. Rock, yeah, hawk, hawk and a large spot. Rock and a hard spot. And... Their agenda is not to help you nutritionally. Their 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 agenda often is to get you on a drug, or uh, one do, one doctor was a surgeon. Okay, surgerist. He's a surgerist. He cut. He he's his job was actually to cut people's toes, feet, legs off due to diabetes. Okay, that was pretty much what he specialized in. So what he started doing was finding out if I can help people prevent this by using a keto-like diet. You like that when I do that? Keto. A keto-like diet. <clears throat> uh, he actually, and this is Dr. California. I can't remember his name. Um, it's not going to come to me real quickly. Probably will as I blather. He, he's from California, and they took his medical license away from him because he was helping people and not getting them in for surgery to cut their feet off, okay? And they were actually walking away going, wow, my type two diabetes went away. And, and, and so anyway, that's the story. There's a doctor also that did a, a similar thing in Australia and he's come around to the keto weight. In other words, some of these doctors want to help the people with diabetes get off diabetes. And one of the side effects is weight loss yeah weight loss and this so one another doctor is is a heart doctor specializes in the cardiovascular system his uh whole dilemma was to get people uh keep to get their hearts healthy and he found out that high carbohydrates diet is what's causing it not the high fats and you kind of maybe heard it in the news it's, just, it's kind of trickling in that the fats aren't so bad for you after all. Oh, what about the thing with eggs? Remember that? Eggs were like bad for you for, for how many years? Did the eggs know that? No. Shame on those eggs. And then all of a sudden, though, oh, they've come out of the closet. They're okay again. Oh, I love my eggs. So eggs are really good for the keto diet too, by the way. So I think I've blathered enough this morning, but I wanted you to, to hear a little bit of, of my excitement as I start this new week. Uh, this is the end of the last week. Matter of fact, uh, this is October. It ends on Wednesday at midnight. And then we go into November. And uh, should I grow oh, no shave November? I don't care. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, and let's see. This is uh, October. So I've got a whole month of November, December, and most of January. And I'm going on a sea cruise. So in exactly three months, The 20, yesterday was the 27th. That's when I began my keto. So the 27th of January, it'll be three months, and that's where I'm going on a cruise. Three, yeah, there, let me bend my fingers back. It's, you know, there we go, three. Three months from now, I'll be going on a sea cruise, and hey, I'd like to look better, I'd like to feel better. Uh, part of part of my going on the sea cruise is, is when you, uh, when you go on these expeditions, or whatever they're called, when you go out, <clears throat> you get to a port and you go do something. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I'm too fat. Oh, I can't do that. I'm too fat. Oh, that's a zip line. What do you mean you can't go over 200 pounds? I'm almost three uh, or at 250 or whatever. I can't do some of those things because, I mean, really? I've got this thing and carry with me. I mean, uh, and this came on gradually. It, it. Uh, I live in Las Vegas, in case you don't know that when you're watching this. And when I moved here... 16 years ago, uh, my boss and the owner of the company 
would take me, well, all three of us would go to buffets. Well, coming from a state where you didn't, I was I was not too bad. I was probably 2, 210, 220, so I was overweight. But I wasn't a big fat pig like I am now. I would go to these buffets and I was used to being living out of state where when you went to a buffet, you gorged yourself like a tick, okay? So I would eat two plates and then a plate of dessert. And sometimes we do that twice a week, but once a week is really a, an overload, okay? And then I would I would do that, and I, would, I probably went to a buffet at least every payday up until, I think, this year. I think it was just my reward for myself on paydays. And I haven't been to a payday, uh, or a payday, I, I haven't been to a payday. A pay, I like payday bars, by the way, the peanuts, those aren't good for you at all. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, I haven't been to a buffet on payday. I haven't been to a buffet itself, period, probably in three months. And uh, probably more, probably six months. Anyway, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that I would do that. And it's like, that's how I got to this, okay? And uh, it's just, folks, this has got to stop. So your skin replaces itself, they say, every three months. So I'm going to have new skin by the by the time I go on my sea cruise, I never thought that was cool. I, I, hmm, I'm going to have new skin. So fasting, intermittent fasting is part of this diet. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, I'm so used to this. I can't I can't go more than a couple hours without eating. I can't I can't imagine going a whole day without eating. I'm going to die. You know, and, the, and I did. For some reason, I've had that kind of, it's kind of a fear because I hate hunger pangs. I hate them. Oh, I hate hunger pangs. But... However, not but, however, if I can fix the hunger pangs, here, here's one of the, or two of the things they said to do. Uh, now, I watched a lot of videos this weekend, so I learned a lot. Okay, two of the things that you can do. Uh, I think there's more, but two of them. Uh, let's just, uh, I'll cover two or three, four, whatever, as I remember them. One of the ones is drinking a cup of coffee with the butter in it, okay? Number two is putting the salt in there, or sometimes by itself, Let's say I'm sitting at my desk. I should have a little, and I'm, I ordered some uh, that Redmond salt from uh, Utah, that pink salt. And they said putting that on your tongue. Now I did that this morning already. And as I was walking Tuesday, my dog, which you may have seen go by me, um, as I was walking her, I felt that taste of the salt as I'm walking her, and I'm thinking, oh, it it, it kind of feels like I just ate. So I'm wondering if that's part of the psychology of you going, oh, I feel satiety, satiety, whatever. I can't, I don't know, I could never, a voiceover actor and I can't say that word right. I'll figure that out one of these days. But it does, it, oh, I just feel like I just ate. And so I, it, it, I, I don't know. So a little salt, okay, that's what I'm saying is if you get hungry, you get hunger pangs, uh, the butter, the salt, uh, a glass of water, okay? And those three things are, are some of the favorites. A nice big glass of water. Maybe maybe drink a, a big glass of water and then put some salt on your tongue. You know, some sea salt. Like this, the lady that I was talking about that I friended uh, last night, uh, her and her family out in Nebraska, I guess several of them are trying to lose weight. But she gets the, the Redmond salt in the, in the coarse crystal size. Yeah, you like the way I'm demonstrating. And pretend there's salt there. Okay, and then... She said, suck on one of those little little, little rock salts of, of Redmond salt. And it gives you that, sometimes you get that uh, snacker feeling where you, you want to eat a snack. It's got to be a salty snack, yeah. Yeah. Well, what if it's the salt that's making you feel like you're, you're not hungry anymore? Huh? I think that's what it is. So anyway, I've got the tricks. I've got the tools. I, I, I binge washed them the weekend. So in other words, I filled up my mental toolbox of, of uh, things to do, things to watch out for. Uh, if you watch those those videos by, by, by Dr. Barry, Dr. Kenneth Barry, uh, l let him know that you heard it from F. Ed Knudsen. He's probably never heard of me yet, but I, I think he will. And also, um, keep me in prayer. Now, I, I am a believer in prayer. Um, some people believe in evolution, and, that, and so you, when you hear people say, uh, well, you know, our bodies were were evolved 2,000, 3,000, 20,000, 50,000 years ago. 
in this way it's like you know I don't really believe that myself if you do that's good you know I don't believe it but I do believe that our bodies were designed probably uh, a little different and if this works if you also here's another thing go to Dr. Uh, uh, Barry's YouTube site look at the comments look at the other people's comments that have lost weight I'm doing that because because I'm karate man. No, I'm not really. <laughs> I did take karate, Shotokan, uh, many years ago. Can't figure myself doing Shotokan. Maybe a little, uh, what, do you, what do you call sumo? Of course, I'd probably fall down and to go, he can't get up, he can't get up. Somebody roll him to the edge and stand him up, would you? So if you, where was I going with that? If you read the comments on uh, Dr. Uh, Kenneth Berry, and his wife Nisha, beautiful little lady. He's not a bad looking guy either. I mean I'm not you know, but I'm not supposed to say stuff like that. Anyway, doctor, he's a real medical doctor, so he's got M D after his name, okay? Stands for medical doctor if you didn't know. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, read other people's comments. And people will throw in helpful hints in those comments. And uh, so just so you know. So I think I'm going to wrap this up. Where are we? We're at a half hour. And so may the good Lord bless you in ways you'd never imagine. This is F. Ed Knudsen saying, I don't know. What should I say? See you later. Keto. Well, I had a phrase I was going to come up with. Uh, eat keto. Keto. Nah. See you later.